so I have been kind of MIA with the videos the last couple months, but things are starting to start to clear up a little bit in the schedule, so I'm able to start doing actually some stuff outside and doing some bow fishing. We just finished up turkey season. It was an awesome turkey season, and so I'm excited to bring those videos probably to you guys next year. But aside all that, got a pretty cool little DIY boat light build that I did. A lot of people out there on, on YouTube have videos on how to do these kind of lights for more of a permanent solution. I was wanting a setup that was removable, pretty temporary if I wanted to take the lights off, if I wanted to leave them on for a duration of time they could stay on there, but also if I wanted to do something else where I didn't need them I could just take them off. And so really did a lot of searching on the internet, a lot of YouTube videos. Also with wiring, not really talented or knowledgeable on anything electrical, so was coming in it, total rookie on everything pretty much. Anyway, I'm gonna show you some of the lights here. I'll try to be as descriptive as I can with why I got what I got and why there are certain things I wanna change and also what I just really like about what I got right now and what I probably won't change at all. And also on a side note, we've used these lights for a lot of bow fishing already and I've absolutely loved them, the way they've turned out, the way they put off light for only having three lights, which is kind of what my budget was. Was not able to spend a lot on lights, but I was really happy with the purchase that I made with these three lights and kind of the chance that I took on them. So this is the light that I decided to try. It's called Sola, and this is a 100 watt light. I've been super happy with them here. They've put up with a lot. And uh, like I said, I got three of them. I got one here, one here, and one here. And kind of the thought of it is that a lot of us are right-handed, so we're gonna be shooting this way anyway with bows or with spears. So that's why I have these set up on the left side. Now, if my budget was a lot bigger, I would definitely have lights on that side as well, which in the long run, probably is a better idea and might happen later on. But at the moment, that's kind of what we got going on here. And I might as well just do a whole rundown of what we're doing here. The platform, which is a very temporary platform that we have for the boat, is this old, yeah, an old lifetime table, picnic tabletop. But it's got, it's got metal bracing on the inside, which helps a lot. And this, I might as well just bring it over. And a side note, a lot of the things that we use has to be durable because we beat everything up. And that is about as DIY redneck or you want to call it as you can get. Literally just set the picnic table on top. We also put a few crates underneath there. Usually like two here and two under there just for support. Now you can see that we've had definitely some times where they've not worked so well and where we've just totally biffed it and it's cost us a lot of money on electronics <laughs> like cameras and phones just the other week. Oh, oh you got it! But it's a good temporary thing right now. You're able to have some room on this right side for the chair. And also if you want to put fish on the right side with, with a bucket. Probably looking at this rail and wondering what is going on with that. I've actually been really happy with this rail, believe it or not. I didn't think this was going to be a long-term solution, but it might end up being. I, don't, I can't get credit for the painter clamp idea. I found it somewhere on the internet. I think there was some forum, but these painter clamps, I think it's a medium sized painter clamp. It fits perfect around the edge of this boat. And then this one inch PVC, um, and obviously the, the thicker the PVC, the better. This is schedule 40, but if you get up to a schedule 80, I think that'd be even better. The diameter of it fits really, really tight on one of the handles of the painter clamps. 
with the rubber piece taken off. It's that tight where if you leave that rubber piece on, I wasn't even able to get it on. So super tight. I don't even have it bolted in at all. And it's held really, really well. Now we'll probably we'll have to figure something out. I like I really like the the concept of the painter clamps. I've just got to figure probably something out with a little bit more support. But so far I've been in love with this rail system. And now to power all these lights, I went back and forth with battery powered and generator powered. And I honestly really wanted to go with the battery. But with the future use of this boat and with possibly adding more lights, batteries was just not a good solution. Obviously the pros of batteries is going to be very, very quiet. But longevity of your lights is going to be a lot better with the generator. And so far I've been really happy with this generator. Did a lot of research on it. But this is a, a Harbor Freight Special. This is a Predator Super Quiet Inverter Generator. And it's a 1400 watt generator. I think it's the smallest one they got. Probably would have gone with 2000 if the budget would have allowed. But could only afford a 1400 watt. So it works fine. I would have got a 2000 watt if I would have added more lights potentially. But um, being I have a 1400 watt we'll see. This has been working absolutely great. No overload use at all. And we've ran this probably four times so far. And we've usually on average been out for about five hours. And it's been great on gas. has not burnt that much gas. And this one's got two outlets. It also has got a quiet mode. I run it on a quiet mode because it doesn't run enough percentage of wattage to overload the generator if I put it on quiet. Basically all that quiet switches is for if you're running on this generator, I think it's 40%. I'm not real sure on that, but if you're running your generator only 40% of what it can do, then you can put on that quiet switch. And it's not a huge difference, but it's something. And it helps with a little bit of footage because of the camera just picking up so much audio from this generator. It can be a little bothersome, but in the long run, I'm really happy that I got this generator. Now onto the final thing, and probably the most important is the wiring. Now when it comes to electrical, I am not knowledgeable at all, and a lot of this stuff is definitely jimmied. And you can already tell that, tell that pretty easily. <laughs> um, electric tape on a lot of stuff. But these lights here are AC, and they have a ground wire, a live wire, and a neutral wire. So they got three wires. I bought a 11 feet of this very thick. This is very, very thick. Really durable coating on it, on this wire, on this electrical wire. And inside, you have those three wires. You got a ground, a neutral, and a live wire. And basically what I did is I cut the wire into three sections. I got one section here, I've got one section here, and I've got the last section right here running to my generator. In the first section of wire, I met up with the electrical wire that comes out of the housing of the light. So you can see it meets up right here. So I connected those wires, ground to ground, live to live, neutral to neutral. I put it through the sidewall just for getting it out of the way, not crimping anything accidentally. In the second section, and so with this I've got three ground wires, three live wires, and three neutral wires. And they're all capped off together. You do like to like, so ground to ground, neutral to neutral, live to live. And I used wire nuts on this part here. And so there's three wires coming together in each wire nut. Like I said, not the best way to do either with electrical tape. A better long-term solution, I believe it's called heat shrink of some sort. I've seen it on some videos. And you slide it on over all your connections and you use a heat gun and it shrinks to a very watertight fit around your wires and just ensures the longevity of your connections and nothing getting corroded. This electrical tape works for now. Let's just say that. It works for now. Nothing wrong with that. But now we've got the second wire, part of the wire. 
meeting up with the third part of the wire. And this is exactly the same as that middle part. There's three different wires into each wire nut. Ground to ground, neutral to neutral, live to live, electrical tape. It's worked so far. And then the third piece, all by itself. Again, another Jimmy. <laughs> we had a 110 plug that was already on electrical wire. And we just connected live to live, ground to ground and neutral neutral on that and electrical tape there. And then this gets plugged right into the generator and it powers all three of these lights. Like I said, I think this has a seven hour run time, but I think we've only ran it, probably the most is about five hours and it's ran strong the entire time. But I can start this up for you even though it's obviously really bright out. I'll still start it up for you just to show you how easy it is to run this thing. All right. So, on switch, on. Air valve, on. Run the choke to start. So it's pretty quiet. Um, the thing is with the mic, I I had it facing wrong the first time. I had it facing right towards the generator, so it's picking up a lot of audio from the generator. Kind of unrealistic. But this is without the economy, the without the economy throttle switch on, or whatever you call it. This is with it on. See, it quiets it a little bit. But we'll turn it back on and then we'll plug it in. You want to kind of let it run for about five minutes or so without any plugs in it, um, just to let the engine warm up and uh, kind of want to do that for quite a while when you first buy it. All right, so we've given it quite a while here and I'm gonna plug it in. It's gonna power all these three lights right here. We'll turn the quiet switch off so you can see it kind of got a little louder but let's plug it in here and see how bright we get here wow that is bright see if it turned those right on and that is with the economy switch um, turned off. Let's turn it on and see how much quieter it gets. You see it doesn't get a lot quieter, but man, but you see how bright these lights are. I am so stoked to have these on here right now. This one I have facing down just because I don't want rocks and stuff to hit it head on from my tires. Now there's a chance it'll hit it straight up. But uh, as long as it's not facing where if a rock comes directly at it, it's going to hit it. The odds of it hitting, the odds of a rock hitting it head on are, are kind of minimal with it facing down. But these are very bright. But anyway, that's how the generator runs and pretty happy with it. The audio is kind of loud with it running, but that's the con of having a generator and versus uh, a battery. But I'll take it. Well, we'll turn the economy switch off. We'll unplug it. And then we will turn our engine switch off. Switch that back on to start and close our air valve. That is it. That's how that generator runs. I'm really happy with it actually. No complaints at all. I mean my only complaint would be it's just, but it, there's nothing it can do. It's a generator. It's loud. The Honda generator probably is, a, I think it is a little quieter, but not a whole lot. Overall I don't think it's anything you can notice with 
the uh, with just your plain ears, but like I said, I'm really happy with this generator. And we'll see how long it lasts. So yeah, hope you guys learned something from this video. If you didn't, you can comment below and ask me kind of what your questions are and anything I have. And I'll try to answer it to the best of my ability, even though I'm not that smart. So there's probably some guys I can direct you to that will probably be a lot more knowledgeable on what you're asking for. But rest assured, I am really happy with how this turned out. And probably will tweak a few things here and there. But really, I think we're just going to be leaving this probably for a good amount of time and just, just roll with it. But the next thing for sure is having a permanent solution with the deck because this picnic table is not gonna work. We've had problems with that slipping. And I've dropped my phone on the bottom of the river and we've lost two cameras so far. <coughs> and I've got a really bad cold so I don't know much more I can talk right now. Anyway, we did lose our our main camera, so kind of rest in peace for that thing. But the next video or a couple of videos that we have will be us bow fishing and spearing on this rig. And tell you what, that's a lot of fun. Definitely spearing has been something that we've just enjoyed in the off season. We got turkey season that just ended, and we're kind of in between that and deer season at the moment. It's a great fun activity to pass the time until deer season gets here and if you like this video consider subscribing don't have to you can always unsubscribe later if you don't want to continue watching these videos and be updated on what we're doing so that's gonna wrap it guys we'll try to bring you more here soon we'll see you on the next one guys